Hi guys. Um, just want to wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving. You know, all of our friends and family that are back in Oregon, Washington, all the places that you guys live. Um, today, uh, I was just going to make a few things and show you how I do it while we're uh, RVing. So, um, I was going to make some turbo bread, which is a, this is a recipe that I actually found off uh, YouTube. Wonderful place. And so, um, in the bowl, I have 13 ounces of warm water. And to that, I'm going to add um, one and a quarter teaspoons of yeast. Super easy recipe. I started making this when we were at home before we left on this trip. I had a KitchenAid at home, of course. Can't bring that. Too big and heavy. So all I really need is my bowl and my spoon, and I can still make bread. So to that, we have our yeast in there, and then we're going to add a teaspoon of salt, or at least a half of one and a half teaspoons of salt. So I'll just do one heaping teaspoon. And then we'll get about the same in there. And we'll just give that a uh, quick little stir to mix that all together. And to that I am going to add some flour. Usually we'll start off with about three cups. And then I'll just go from there. And I just use the end of the spoon to mix it up. And it does it it does work just like the a dough hook would. If you think about it, you know, when you're making bread with your kitchen aid or whatever you have. And then once this is all mixed together, I'm just going to get it all mixed together and get the bowls kind of scraped down. I'm going to get all that stuff off the sides. I'm just going to make this for a Thanksgiving dinner. Thought about buying some rolls or something, but I thought, oh no, make some bread and that way it'll have leftovers because this makes really good uh, French toast too. Just cut it up a little bit thicker slices and super good. That's still kind of sticky. So I'll just add maybe a half cup or so. That all worked in. And sometimes I know stone, the spoon normally does work pretty well, but sometimes what I'll do is I'll kind of get my hand wet, and then it, get the, it gets the dough wet, and you just kind of roll it around in the bowl, and it'll pick up that extra, pick up that, that extra flour that's down there on the bottom, and I'll get it all worked in. And the other thing too is I like. Maggie's laying on the floor, so it's like trying to cook and play Twister at the same time. Um, but these bowls that I brought along, they're just some Tupperware bowls because you, know, you can't bring your heavy stuff along when you're doing this. So, but this size bowl here works really nice, and I use it for when I make my bread dough or pizza dough or anything because I can just mix it up in that and then uh, pop the lid on it and it will rise. Since it is the um, turbo bread. It'll only take maybe an hour, hour and a half to rise, and then after that, we'll I'll put it in another pan, uh, loaf pan or 
something like that and uh, let it rise again in another uh, I'm just going to uh, show you guys how I'm going to season up my turkey uh, for tomorrow, Thanksgiving. And uh, it, uh, I've done this before in the past with the whole turkey. Of course, when you're in RV, you don't have the room to cook a whole turkey. So I bought a turkey breast. And what I like to do is I like to drizzle some olive oil all over it. And then I kind of rub it in. Of course, it's been washed and had it dry inside and out. And put some on the inside, just like the flavor of the olive oil. Made this for family before with the holidays, and they all loved it. So it was the best turkey they ever had. But once you get your olive oil all, all over it, and then tomorrow before I put it in the Dutch oven and cook it, I'll take some butter and put it up underneath the skin between the skin and the and the breast. So after I've oiled it up. I'm going to take, uh, I use this Adolf's tenderizer and it has, uh, it's already got the seasoning in there. And the other thing I do sometimes, is flip this over, is I'll take just a fork and just kind of pierce the turkey breast in a few spots. I just take out frustrations too sometimes, but. my tenderizer with the spices in it and then I'm just going to cover it really good because turkey just like chicken is very bland can be it's not seasoned up good and you don't want bland chicken or turkey to me the seasoning is the whole part when you're cooking you can cook anything but if you don't season it right not that great, I don't think, but never really had any complaints about my cooking, so I guess I must be doing something right. Give it a really good, I mean, it looks like a lot, but it's a pretty good sized breast there. <coughs> Put it on the inside. And you kind of want to really rub it in really good. Get it into all those nooks and crannies and all over. So I missed a spot. And the reason I poked the holes in the turkey breast is because. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to, first I'm going to wash my hands. And I'm going to drain off some of this extra oil and stuff I got here in this pan. It'll get too, clay will get too slippery on me. I'll lose it. But then after I've done all that, I'm going to wrap it up in some plastic. Feel like Julia Child. this up really good. And I'm going to wrap it the 
of the way. And then after it's wrapped really nice and tight, I'm going to put it in the fridge overnight. Of course, this dumb thing here is going to want to cut again. Ah, there's the cutter. Ah, it'll be smarter than the box, I guess. Okay. So I'm going to wrap it real good this way again. idea and I'll probably wrap it a few more times but I'm going to let that sit in the fridge overnight and with the holes that I poked in there it's going to give that olive oil and this uh, seasoning that I like to use it's going to give it a chance to get down into that meat overnight and make it really nice and yummy it'll be moist and, uh, and then tomorrow we'll uh, put it in the Dutch oven and we'll have our turkey for uh, So here's the uh, turkey breast that I seasoned up yesterday with uh, the olive oil and uh, the uh, Adolf's seasoning that I like to use. It has all the spices in it already. Got it in my 14 inch GSI uh, Dutch oven and it's got the hard anodized finished in there so it makes real easy for it to uh, clean up. But the other thing I do before I cook it is I found found some of this wine over at uh, Walmart. Uh, I like to cook with wine but I don't really particularly like to drink it. But uh, I just pour this in instead of using water or chicken stock or anything like that. I like to put some of that in there. And as the turkey cooks, the juices will kind of combine with that wine and uh, gives it a really great flavor. And then when this is almost done cooking, maybe like a half hour, 45 minutes left, I'm going to uh, throw in my potatoes and carrots and I'll finish cooking it off that way. So I've got the uh, turkey in the Dutch oven. i got about 14 briquettes on the bottom, around 20... 25 on top and the thing you have to remember when you're cooking in a Dutch oven you have to think of it as a regular oven and how you control the heat is through the amount of briquettes that you use on top and bottom and so um, I'll probably have to make up another batch of briquettes at some point during the cooking time but uh, right now I've got it to where it's about at 350 and I'll come out every 20 minutes or so and I'll turn it because you don't want it to uh, sit in one spot too long and you get a hot spot on the bottom you'll burn your burn whatever you're cooking on the inside. So there's our turkey breast in the Dutch oven. It's been in there now for a while and I'm going to get my veggies. I'm not going to have enough hands. lid back on. Then more briquettes. Got one more in there. That should finish. 
wash it off. Our turkey is done, along with the uh, potatoes and carrots, and we're going to be dragging it in. And there's the finished turkey dinner that we cooked in the uh, Dutch oven. Got some uh, stuffing, potatoes, baby carrots, and homemade bread. Is it good? Yeah. <laughs>